Welcome to this week's program of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm your co-host, Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And Will, what is the shirt that you have? I'm glad you asked. This week's shirt is my RHA shirt. I got it from Cal State East Bay. I was on the Residence Hall Advisory Committee, and, and, I, and, and I, I got this shirt to, to let everyone know that I was, that I was on the committee. Excellent. Do you still uh, do anything in conjunction with those people? N not really. I, I, I'm not really involved at RHA anymore, but I still wear this shirt on occasion. Makes a lot of sense. Shows what was important to you then. Today our program deals with an organization which has been at the forefront of training and employing individuals on the autism spectrum, the Specialist Guild. A brief disclaimer, I am on the board of the Specialist Guild. Um, just wanted to let our people know that. And our guests are Nicholas Axel, who is a participant and a QA engineer in the Specialist Guild, and the co-founder and chief technical officer Andy Axel. Will, would you take it from there? Gladly. Andy, how long have you been in Specialist Guild? Um, we started the Specialist Guild a, a little over four years ago. Um, and um, we are a nonprofit social enterprise. And it took about a year for us to get all the paperwork done with the government. So um, we have been in operation about four years now. My wife and I are parents of, of a person on the autism spectrum, and as a result, we have been involved with the community for about uh, close to 30 years now. And one thing that we started to recognize as our son, who is Nicholas actually, um, became an adult is that there is a pretty significant problem with unemployment in this community. So we started looking around trying to find uh, what programs were available to help people get jobs. And we discovered that there was, weren't very many um, at all. So we decided to start one, and that's the Specialist Guild. What do you do in Specialist Guild? We uh, provide vocational training and an internship to people on the spectrum to work in technology jobs, um, basically, uh, it, and then we hope that uh, they will transition to open market employment. Tell us how the Specialist Guild operates. Uh, the Specialist Guild basically uh, has people apply online uh, for a position in the training program. Um, we evaluate the candidates that, that apply to see if they would succeed in a technical job and uh, choose a number of them, provide some training. Um, and those who do well in the training program, uh, we typically hire as interns. Uh, we take on, uh, I guess, contract work from the industry and our interns work on those contracts. Uh, and uh, this gives them a resume as well as experience. So uh, hopefully after a year or so, they, they can start applying for regular jobs at technology companies. What type of technical training does the specialist skill do for uh, applicants? Typically at this point, we train people to be software testers, uh, QA engineers essentially. Um, there is an international accreditation body that sets down a curriculum that we follow. And um, the training program is about 12 weeks long. Uh, it's very heavy on hands-on practical mm -hmm. training, not just academics. Um, and uh, roughly we find that about half the people who start the program, maybe a little more, um, both stick with it and mm -hmm. also show aptitude for the kind of work um, that QA requires. Um, typically, um, obviously you can imagine people have to be able to sit in front of a computer for pretty much the whole day mm -hmm. and 
work that way. So if if someone is is unable to do that, they wouldn't be able to do this kind of work. And uh, uh, the second requirement is there's some technical, uh, logical uh, processes that we have to follow, and people have to be able to comprehend those processes and be able to follow them. So that's pretty much what we do. Okay. Um, how is it that you've found that this type of uh, technical work seems to be particularly good for a number of people on the spectrum? I think that's an excellent question. Um, when we started the Specialist Guild, uh, we looked around to see what kind of programs have succeeded in the past around the world. And there were a number of um, programs and companies that have uh, had some success in, in the QA uh, software testing arena. Uh, so we, since my background is, is from the technology world, software, um, I knew quite a bit about that anyways. So we decided that we might as well follow a, a model that seems to work for, for other people. Um, and also, we live in Silicon Valley, so mm -hmm. um, you know that we had a relatively high hopes that uh, the companies around Silicon Valley would would be welcoming to people on the spectrum as, as testers. Thank you. So, Nicholas, can you tell us about your experience in the Specialist Guild? How did you get involved? And you know, tell us about your uh, career in the Specialist Guild so far. I was with the first group of engineers that Andy was working with and uh, so like he said I was sent from a front of a computer to learn how it was done and it took a lot of concentration hours of training And uh, yes, he gave lectures to teach the group how to do it. Should I go into specifics? Uh, yes. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your experience when you actually uh, got the job and were working for the client companies? So, uh, jobs I uh, I got. There was a full-time job I had for a p period of time at Salesforce, mm -hmm. where it was one of their QA engineers mm -hmm. with a team. And what I was doing was assignments every day mm -hmm. that they had available, such as with PowerPoint was one of them. And I would test on mobile devices such as the Android, their phone, or the or the tablets, which could be either mm -hmm. Apple or Android. I did some testing on BlackBerry too, and Windows Phone. So there was a, quite a variety that I was learning how to do. Very interesting. Does this kind of work seem like something that you'd like to continue with? I'd like to continue learning it. It's an ongoing process. Excellent. Very good to hear. Will, would you like to add some questions? Um, how long were you at this job? Okay, the Salesforce job was a year... Uh, for me and for the other testers on the team. However, uh, after that, I went back to s the special skilled and I did some more assignments such as projects for Wikimedia. They're building in San Francisco when they had s stuff for me to do. I'm on contract with them. They are contracting with the specialist guild, actually. So I'm helping them and some other 
testers on the team right now are helping them. So they have app software that has to be tested on the smartphones and the tablets. How much time did you spend in this job? Okay, so both jobs combined special skilled and Salesforce I've been at for since 2012. So that's it's very three impressive. Years. So that's three years I've been doing engineering. Andy, uh, what have you found out that employers have as challenges in, in dealing with uh, employees and contractors who are uh, on the spectrum? Uh, another excellent question. I think the major challenge for people on the spectrum is being able to get through the interview process. Um, uh, as you know, uh, social skills aren't the strong, mm. strongest points of people on the spectrum. So uh, the way the interview process is set up, uh, you basically have to sell yourself and our guys are not that good at that. Uh, even though they're, from a skills perspective, they're, they're good employees. So I think uh, I found the response somewhat disappointing in Silicon Valley. I would like to see more employers actively pursuing people with disabilities, including people on the spectrum. Um, and um, that's an area that we would like to uh, do more work in, you mm -hmm. know, do some outreach kind of work. And also do more business development because, quite frankly, right now, although we have terrific customers, we, we don't have enough work for all of our interns. So our biggest challenge right now is, you know, more, more work, mm -hmm. more work for, for on contract for us to train the interns and more work for our graduates to, to actually mm -hmm. transition into the workforce. Excellent. What kind of uh, technical companies would do you think would be best able to use the special skilled uh, trainees? Um, we, we actually discovered that the perhaps the most uh, value that we provide to our customers is to do manual testing on mobile devices. Mobile device testing is very challenging for everybody uh, because there's just so many different varieties and it's 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 hard to automate that process so actually um, uh, that's an area where we often find uh, issues that companies were not aware of before uh, things don't look right or or they're awkward to use or what have you and uh, our customers are thrilled with the, with the results of the work we do and I think that this is an area where people on the spectrum excel mm -hmm. uh, for two reasons basically one is that they don't uh, they they can focus on detail and see things that neurotypicals don't mm -hmm. uh, and also they don't get as easily bored as as the rest of us do so uh, I think that I I hope the companies start recognizing that uh, uh, people on the spectrum has special value in certain um, types of employment, software testing happens to be one, but it's not the only one. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully we can build the momentum so more, more employers will embrace hiring people on the spectrum. Very good to hear. Will? Um, how do you want others to get involved in Specialist Guild? Uh, well, I will, I've just talked about how I want the employers involved. Uh, I think your question is probably regarded as if someone is on the spectrum and wants to sort of get involved, uh, we, they can actually go to our website and there is a, a, a job application on it. It's not really a job, but it's it's application for training. Um, but we're using a pre-canned module that calls it job application. Mm -hmm. But they can just go there and fill it out and um, tw we, we basically run training twice a year and uh, about a m three or f two, three weeks before we schedule a training program, we will call in people for an interview, a personal interview, to um, basically evaluate if they would do well in this program or not. 
So that's the way they can get involved. What are your, how has Specialist Guild helped you and what are your career goals? Specialist Guild has helped me in areas such as learning how to write test cases and executing test cases that others have written for me to complete, such as uh, from Wikimedia and Foundation Center and other companies. So that's one example of area. I'm doing manual test casing, but I'm learning how to use some automated tools as well. My career goals are I'm looking for work in this area. Because that's because of where I live, I believe there's potential job opportunities for me. Thank you. Thank you. Andy, uh, I understand that besides software quality assurance, um, the Specialist Guild is uh, investigating uh, going into other technical areas for training of uh, future classes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Certainly. Um, in fact, we call the company the Specialists Guild mm -hmm. because we always plan to branch out into uh, multiple career mm -hmm. areas. Um, quite frankly, uh, software testing or QA is not uh, suitable for everybody mm -hmm. on the spectrum or, or really for everybody generally. So uh, we are looking into other opportunities in, in uh, high value skilled work that would allow people with um, different interests and mm -hmm. different skill sets to participate in the workforce. Um, so uh, we have already, um, this is obviously an area where uh, we need some additional help. Hopefully we can help uh, find some people to help us voluntarily, as well as perhaps be able to raise some uh, funds to, to perhaps hire staff to actually explore, you know, basically develop businesses that we could mm -hmm. go go after. But there are, you know, uh, perhaps opportunities in the in the security field, certainly data entry, mm -hmm. where uh, more people could participate. Um, we have also explored a little bit in digital document processing. So there, there are other, what I would call uh, nice white collar type of work that uh, I think people on the spectrum would be particularly suitable for, and uh, we would like to pursue. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, besides the existing core businesses, what's a good way of um, of the people, either from a business perspective or an advisory perspective, uh, to get in touch with the specialist guild and see if we can might be able to develop these new areas? Um, I think the easiest thing is to go on our website which is uh, the specialist guild.org. Mm -hmm. But, uh, um, and, and we have contact uh, page there, so uh, that's one way. They can also get um, in touch with me, and uh, my email address is andy at tsgteam.org. Mm -hmm. So TSG is also the specialist guild. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'd love to hear from whoever has any ideas or, or opportunities for us. Um, we could definitely use more work, more opportunities. Um, if somebody wants to just help out, that would be also very welcome and uh, love, love to talk. Excellent, excellent. One of the things that we've discussed throughout our series, Andy, are the difficulties uh, that people on the spectrum face in employment. And I'd like to ask you, what advice you have both for individuals on the spectrum seeking employment and for society in general? Um, excellent question. I, um, I think we learned a number of things in the last four years about this. And um, uh, one of the things we learned is that um, in each community, the opportunities for people on the spectrum will be different. Uh, you cannot necessarily start a software testing program 
uh, in let's say in, in Midwest or, or somewhere where there is no software industry to be um, helping you out with it. So I think we have a concept of what we call social franchising, which is simply says, uh, if you want to start a program in your community, you need to look around and find the intersection between um, what's in demand locally in terms of uh, jobs and what are people on the autism spectrum, uh, what do they exceed at? So, and then develop a program. As an example, we, we, we worked with a company in Florida and they started a car wash mm -hmm. because locally that was uh, something they could do and they employ people on the spectrum in, in all kinds of different jobs from accounting to actually doing the car washing. So I think there are opportunities, but um, I don't think we can sit around and wait for uh, you know state and government agencies to really mm -hmm. take the lead on this. I think it has to be uh, parents and, and friends and other people who would, and, and people on the spectrum themselves who need to take the lead on it. So it sounds like you'd be uh, advocating the old saying, uh, think globally, that being everything related to employment on the autism spectrum, but then act locally, find out what is best and suitable in your community to develop that employment. I is think that correct? I, I think that's very well put. I think that's exactly right. You, you need to learn from what people have around the world, but you have to dis look at your own community and decide what's going to work there. And perhaps you will be able to find an example of something from, that someone else is doing somewhere else that will work for you too and, and learn from it. But uh, yes, exactly. Well, excellent. Thank you, Nick and Andy. Now let's go over to our cultural correspondence. Now let's go over to our next segment, our cultural correspondence, Stacy Kennedy. In our next segment, uh, Stacey Kennedy will be providing us with the uh, culture events of the community. Thank you, Keith. Well, how are you tonight? I'm Stacey Kennedy, and um, today, or tonight, more likely, I would like to uh, share a few some events that will be happening around the community, and especially around the holidays. Uh, in fact, uh, there's one going on tonight, um, December 9th, Wednesday, called Autism and Love, the Screening, Independent Lens Screening of Autism and Love, and Holiday Art Fair. Uh, doors have opened at 5.30 p.m., and the screening will happen at 6 and go until 8.30. Um, so um, there will be another um, time you, you will be able to see this in January, but first I will just give a little detail on what Autism and Love is. It's uh, for adults at different places on the autism spectrum. They open up about their personal lives as they navigate dating and romantic relationships. An eye-opening first-person portrayals um, show that despite many challenges faced by those with autism, love can find a way. And this is moderated by Lance Scott, Director of Arts, Recreation, and Socialization. And for what I understand, it's wheelchair accessible. So um, there are plans to show this January 11th uh, at 10 p.m. 9 central on PBS. So those who don't live in San Francisco, you can watch it on PBS. Next, um, December 12th, Saturday, December 12th, is a Best Buddies holiday bowling party and training ride. Um, Best Buddies California, as a reminder, their mission is to establish a global volunteer movement that creates opportunities for one-to-one -one friendships, integrated development, employment, and leadership development for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, but anyhow, this um, event, the bowling party, will take place at the Presidio Bowling Center on 93 Moraga Avenue, December 12th, and it starts, it's supposed to start at, at 11 a.m. and it goes till 1 p.m. So yeah, if you're interested in a pre-training bike ride, uh, you should definitely go to this and there will be food and beverages and RSVP as soon as possible because space is limited. So, and 
for further um, detail on location, it's 93 Moraga Avenue, but if you want to know the cross street, it's Montgomery Street. And the zip code, 94129. So there is that. And December 19th, there is our, um, there is our um, Ascend Holiday Potluck Party, which will take place at the Ark. Oh, and to go back to Autism and Love, that'll be taking place at the Ark of San Francisco, too. Uh, 1500 Howard Street. And parking is very reasonable. There is a garage on 12th Street, um, which is uh, $5 every two hours. But there's also meter parking, which is $2 an hour. So same for the Ascend Holiday Party at the Ark of San Francisco. December 19th starts at 2, goes until 5 p.m. And it's our favorite annual time of year with food, conversation, music, and good cheer. And a Santa DJ. And there are games and low sensory space available. And if, uh, since it's a potluck, bring something. I mean, if you don't, that's okay. Come anyways. And that should be it. And there will be... As far as it goes for entertainment, there will be some singing, including me. I'll sing about a couple songs, and a, uh, including a duet with somebody. And so that is it for tonight. Those are the events that are happening and coming up soon. Thank you very much, Stacy. One additional event of uh, interest. On Saturday the 19th, the Ascend Jog Club will be having its monthly meeting at 10 a.m., 1600 Howard Street in San Francisco at the Ark. Um, Ascend, a board member, Brian Jacobs, will be giving a presentation on the use of LinkedIn for job hunting, and we encourage our community to attend. Thank you very much. And that's it for uh, this week's segment. So uh, I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. Stacy Kennedy. Nicholas Saxel. And Andy Axel. Okay. Uh, we are Ascend live on the autism spectrum. And until our next program, we wish you all a safe and happy holiday season. Thank you very much.